Oh boy. Mama, what are you doing? Ow! Oh, oh. Mama, you're on top of me. Guys, Ethan's air conditioner doesn't work. And I thought it was hot outside. It's not. You have probably lost 10 pounds in here today. <laughs> That's good, I could use to lose 10 more. <laughs> That was the best day of hay we have ever had. Oh boy. Mama, what are you doing? I know, I know, I know, I know. There you go. You got a baby? You got a baby? It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Oh, my heart. Okay, she's lambing. And she lands, and I can barely breathe. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It is hay day or Thursday, and uh, I don't know. Is that a good sign or a bad sign? <laughs> Let's get these guys in a in a pen and see what's going on. And she's up from being casted, so I'm just gonna. I see there's uh, this lamb. Is kind of I'm not sure how long she's been trying to kick this lamb out this one so I'm just gonna I gloved up so I'm just gonna see if I can be of assistance because I just I don't know the time so I'm just gonna do it Mama. bad feeling that this, you stole this other lamb from that other lady. I just have that feeling. There we go, Mama. Oh, don't fall on me. Oh, oh. Mama, you're on top of me. And on top of your baby. Oh, God. Send help. Uh. Oof. Hey. There you go, man. There you go. That's been stuck for a while. Because that was a full on meconium. Poop. I do wonder if that's not hers. Pick your milk. Did you steal a lamb? I have a funny feeling you did by the size of that lamb. I think she did. She got lots of milk, so. So here's the scoop on this ewe. I think that that ewe back there was casted. I think this is her lamb, and I think this one was in heavy labor, and I think she stole it. And mom is not interested, not yet, because she got the scent of the other one. So we have to wait till she's come out of her shock. Um, but I think the other one has a lamb in her still, so it might not all be for nothing. I'm gonna bring that other one up and check her now. Sorry, you guys, I didn't have much time to grab the camera, and I was all gloved up, but. Uh, I was able to get this lamb out. It was upside down. It was coming the right way, but it was totally upside down. So 
This is the first one this group, first one probably that I've ever really had to completely flip a lamb inside the right way. Uh, and she's, she, she's large. Uh, and when they're large back there, it's really hard to fit anything else besides a lamb back there. So I can't feel my arm. <laughs> it was tight. Uh, so look at so look at the size of that lamb. I think she had, I think she had this other one because I'm gonna show like it looks exactly the same. But what happened? She was casted, so this ewe was totally upside down pushing, which can happen, especially if they're large marges. Um, but this one, like, look at the difference between those two. Like uh, a complete suffolk and then that little white one. So now this is the problem. If this you, so she's looking off the suffolk now. If she figures out that that suffolk is indeed hers, they will have, if the white one's not hers, she could now figure out by scent that that's hers because she can smell her on the lamb. And then she may uh, abandon the white one. And now it's too late because the other one, that one's all looked off because of her. So that one that just lambed, has again lost the scent. So I would like this you to get up and, sh and prove to me that she loves both. I'm gonna try and get her up right now. Fingers crossed. So it could have been much worse. Worst case scenario, if no one wants the white one, at least we have the nanny and the nanny doesn't care. She will take all the lambs. It's whether the lambs will take her. All right, that was a start to the heart. Uh, that was quite a bit of a gong show first thing in the morning, but this is what we're doing all day. Hey. <laughs> Looks like she's all right. Just a little bit in shock, I think. So for most of the morning, we've been into hay mode. So Bob dropped off the bagger. So we have that all ready to go. I ran to Ethan's, got some wagons. Right there, wagons. So I ran and grabbed two. I think Ethan's bringing the other two. So what we were hoping to do was put, put the oats, which is right there. We were hoping to fill the back end of the bag with the oats first and then able to mark it with like paint or a marker where it stops and then put the haylage in front. And the reason why we want to do the haylage kind of last, so to be at the, you know, the front end of the bag or last harvested uh, is because we were hoping we'd have enough to do some dry hay. And he doesn't want to merge everything because for dry hay, we want it spread out more. So anyway, it's been a bit of a, just j jiggling of plans because there's way more oats than we originally thought. Here's, like, there's a lot here. Well, it's not bad on top, but it's pretty wet underneath. Yeah, it's pretty wet still underneath, but it's not terrible. We might, we might be okay. Yeah, so Mark's merging right now. Uh, looks like he's got the headlands done over there. We're doing, so for first cut, if you remember, we, we put two rows into one. For second cut, because it's quite a bit thinner, we're doing three rows into one. So it should make Ethan's time a whole lot more efficient as well. We should easily be able to do hay in a day this way. We did, you know, we did two bags for first cut in a day, a long day.
Okay, you guys probably, what? Okay. Okay, so we have a marker. We're done our new seating. So we're just marking where it ended up. Probably bit of, did about 60 feet. So I'm gonna mark it. lost 10 pounds in here today. <laughs> That's good, I could use to lose 10 more. <laughs> Can't we all? falling off the glass. Right. I just got it set down. Oh, our fields are bumpy. Well, it's just sticking tape on so the oh, heating oh, here is causing oh, it to let go too. It's funny. Just, just, just as I am with the size of saucer. Like, 
feels my legs. Uh, concrete's not really the nice to see the ones that you stand on. Well, you should, my guess would be 20 bales. You get that little. Yep. She's sticky. Vega works really good today. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it's dry, but it doesn't feel crazy dry. No, but it'd be. I would. It probably sticky. Be. It's like that sticky. It's July hay. July hay. Here, you want the shovel? Well, I have to say that was the best day of hay we have ever had and very thankful. Jess helped, Mark helped, Monty helped, and Ethan ran the harvester and in the non-air conditioned cab, it felt honestly, I've never even been in a sauna. I mean, I've only been in one sauna in my life, but it, uh, it compared. So yeah, this is, this is really nice. Now we just need like a, a lot of rain. We need like a week of rain. However, it's done and the new seating did really, really well. Mark, uh, we actually filled, it did almost the equivalent 10 acres of our new seating, which was uh, the alfalfa and the oats as a nurse crop did so 10 acres of it did the equivalent of about 30 acres of our alfalfa. So the second cut was not near what the first cut was, but we have a bag and that was the goal. And we have about five acres left, a little bit more maybe to bale up next week. And we'll let it just sit all weekend and bake and get really dry. And then uh, I texted Danny to come and bale our hay next week. So a plan is coming together, but yeah, here's our bag. It's about 60 feet to the to the line. So this is all new seeding. So that's the oats. That's why I want to mark it because we'd have to. We'll have two different rations for that, and then that's all just the alfalfa with a little bit of grass. So yeah. Hey, second cut.